Welcome. In this series of videos, we will cover the design and implementation of a project, from initial design through coding and development to testing, using the PowerBasic Windows Compiler. Today we will continue our project to look at the use of software autoforms by adding tooltips. In our last video, we created a form runner application to allow us to run autoforms by specifying a type of form from a list. What we're going to be doing today is to be adding some more functionality to the autoforms application. The first form we see on screen at the moment is a fairly basic form, comprising of a drop down list, a list box, and some text boxes as well as two buttons. What we're going to add functionally today are tooltips. This is to allow you to specify in our configuration file a tooltip to place on a particular object, so that when a user hovers over such an object, a tooltip will be displayed to indicate the purpose or what the user needs to do with that particular control. Tooltips are especially useful, as they can give indication to the user what's needed or what a function of a particular object is, without you having to place any permanent message on the dialog itself thereby reducing clutter. So let's have a look at the code to see how we can turn these tooltips on. In order to add the tooltips functionality, we're going to include one of the libraries. This will be the tooltips library. This is a library we've covered previously in a tooltips video. But what we're going to do today is to make these tooltips conditional on the configuration file. So before we put the coding in, let's have a look at the configuration file itself. The configuration files are held in this configs folder. If we have a look at the test demo CSV file, we will see that this has a number of columns. Each of these columns set properties of the individual objects. We're going to add a new column to this file called tooltips. And for each of the objects displayed to the user on screen, which the user can interact with, we're going to put a string of text in the tooltips column. For example, on the OK button, we have a tooltip, which we have a string saying, save the form. And for the exit button, we have a string saying, exit the form. This is a piece of text we want to pop up on screen when the user's mouse hovers over the object. So as you will see, the buttons, the text boxes, the drop down list, and the list box all have tooltips set up. There's no point having a tooltip on a label because the user cannot interact with a label. So we'll now have to amend our code so that when the objects are loaded into the array, we pull in this tooltips column. So the first thing we need to change is we'll need to add to our enumeration at the beginning of the code to add on tooltips as the next available column to pull data out of. So now we have a ref tooltips constant. So the routine we have to load up this configuration file will cope with the extra column without any further changes. What we'll need to work on is the populate form function. The populate form function takes the global array, strconfig, and creates the objects on screen. And once all these objects are created, we'll need to then call a piece of code to populate the tooltip for those objects which have been defined as having tooltips. So we will create a new variable at the beginning of the code called strtooltip. This will contain the string we wish to place in as a tooltip on the object. And as the last action before we move on to the next entry in the config file, we need to look for those objects which have tooltips. We can pull that information out by using a simple parse command. This will use our new constant ref tooltips. This will put the string within that tooltips column into the tooltip variable. Now all we need to do is to check to see if this string is not an empty length string. If it is populated, we can now specify the tooltip. And to do that, we're going to be calling a function within our new tooltips library. And this function is called tooltip set tooltip. This function takes two parameters. The first parameter is the Windows handle of the object. We're using a Windows API call, get dialog item which takes in itself two parameters, the handle of the dialog and the handle of the control. 
This will return the Windows handle itself, which is our first parameter. Our second parameter is the string we wish to set on that object, which will be our tooltip. So with this simple bit of code in place, we should now have tooltips on our objects. Let's try running the application and see what we get. So our application runs quite happily. If we move the mouse up to the name field, and there we have a tooltip. And if we look at the list box, we have another tooltip. The department, we have the one for the department. And we have the ones on the OK and the exit buttons as well. So we have successfully added tooltips to our application being configured within the configuration file. However, we can go further. The tooltips at the moment are set as purely black and white. Black text on a white background. Can we add colour to our tooltips? In order to do that, we're going to have to make a change to our library routines, the tooltips include file. This is a function within the library where the tooltip is set up. As this is a library, we don't want to break functionality on any applications which are using an older version of this library. Therefore, the two additional parameters I'm going to add to this function we're going to make as optional parameters. If the parameters are not given, it will default to having black text on a white background. And if the parameters are given, this will set the foreground and the background colours. So there are our two optional parameters. B colour for the background colour and T colour for the text colour. As these are optional parameters, we'll need to test to see whether these parameters have been provided by the calling routine or not. So I'm going to set up two local variables called background colour and text colour. These will be what are used within this function itself. We're now going to use the inbuilt is missing function to determine whether the parameters have been given or not. When calling a subroutine or function with optional parameters, if you designate a parameter as being optional, then every parameter following that is also automatically optional. So we only need to test to see whether we've been given B color or not. So this is our new code. If the B color variable is missing from the parameters, then no optional parameter has been set. So we'll default our background color to white and our text color to black. Otherwise, if we do have the parameter coming in, we will take that parameter and we will put it into the background color and the text color one goes into the text color. So that handles the parameters in the function. What do we have to change now in our code to allow these variables to set the foreground and background colors? First of all, to allow our tooltip colors to be used, we need to check for the themed dialog. So we're going to call a Windows API routine called set Windows theme. This will allow us to set colors on our tooltips, whether the theme is there or not. And following our send message to set the tooltip, we now want to set the background color and the foreground color. We can do this by two additional send message commands. One to set the background color and one to set the foreground color, the color of the text itself. The remaining piece of code we'll need to put in here is this call to set window theme. This set window theme is going to load up one of the Windows libraries, this one here. And we're going to be calling that routine in that library. So this completes the changes to our tooltips library. As we've set two optional parameters, if we run the code now, it would appear exactly as it did before because we're not making use of the optional parameters. But it's always a good test to make sure that the original functionality has not broken. So our application works fine and the tooltips appear as normal. Now we want to call this by putting in the colors. So we will go back to the beginning of the populate form function and we're going to set up two new local variables, one for the background color and one for the text color. While in this video, I'm going to be hard coding these within this function so that we set the default standard for all the tooltips. But there's no reason why you couldn't put that information within the configuration file. That way, 
Should you wish it, you could have different tooltips or different types of objects. But we'll leave that functionality for a later video. So we will now populate the default values of our background and text colour variables. So let's say for example we wanted to set the background colour of the tooltip to red and the text colour to white. And we will add these two variables onto the end to our call to the tooltip set tooltip function. So we try running that code now. Our application will launch normally, but our tooltip is now going to appear in a bright red colour. This stands out more than the straightforward black and white and gives you the option of setting a very colourful tooltip. We can alternatively change the background colour to for example yellow and the foreground colour to black. If we try running that now, we will see our tooltip now appears as we've defined with a yellow background and a black text. So you can choose whichever colour scheme fits your application better. So in summary what we've achieved today is we've added a new encode library to our application to allow us to set tooltips on selected objects. Any object which the user can interact with, which you have defined in the config file as having a tooltip, will make it appear. So you can have some objects with tooltips and some objects without. Hopefully you'll find this code useful in your applications, but that's it for today. Thank you for watching.